It's the King 5 High School Sports Blitz. He's back from London, but still a little foggy. Here's Paul Silvey. <laughs> He's so clever. Tony White bringing us into another high school sports blitz. I got to give a shout out to Cleveland High School tonight. Got the jersey on. Appreciate John over there getting us hooked up over here at the sports blitz. You know, Cleveland is finally getting the first practice field that school has ever had. It's a nice field turf field. It's going to be going in in March. Congratulations to the Eagles. Finally have a nice facility to go down and practice some football and whatever other sport they want on there. So welcome to the show, Cleveland. Good luck with the program as you move forward. Let's get on with this one tonight. We've got a program to get to ourselves. We're stretching the mat tonight. 17 games, 13 towns and cities. Oak Harbor to Redmond, down to Tacoma, and Gig Harbor. Spanaway and Tumwater, we've got a lot of them tonight. We start, though, at Spark Stadium in Puyallup. It's a battle between Vikings as Curtis takes on Puyallup High School. Puyallup quarterback Jacob Holcomb gets the home team going with a strike over the middle, caught by Justin Haas, and he sprints toward the end zone to get his team up early. On the next drive, Curtis responds. After the play fake from Kyle Russell, the quarterback throws it short to Marlon Jones, makes a cut, sprints untouched into the end zone. Jones showed a lot of speed on that one, but the Puyallup offense would not be stopped this time. Holcomb gives to Kyle Kramer, picks up some big yards on his way to the Curtis territory here. That sets up the Kramer run to give Puyallup the lead. And the Bites keep that lead. Holcomb looking over the middle right here, and he finds Haas again. Puyallup with a big win tonight, piling up the points, 55-6. What a game tonight between Oak Harbor and Squalicum. Same score as the Chiefs and Patriots on Sunday Night Football. That kind of offense in this one. Devontae Powell working his way through the defense and into the end zone for a touchdown. Nice play here. Caleb Fitzgerald launches to the end zone and Dorian Harden catches it just inside and he's in for six. Fitzgerald sneaks under center again. Look how low he is. This time he hands to Caden Lockett who powers in. Squall from quarterback Spencer Lloyd goes to the air. He finds Colin McEachern and McEachern is like MacGyver. Somehow, he makes it work. Breaks a tackle and he's in. 43-40 to final. Squalicum a winner. Now, let's throw it to Alec, the intern, for O'Day and Garfield. All right, and under the shadow of the Space Snow, we're here for some Friday night football action in Memorial Stadium between the 3A defending state champs, O'Day and the Garfield Bulldogs. The visiting team, the O'Day Fighting Irish, ready for their Metro League clash with Garfield this Friday afternoon, where they would look to grab their seventh win of the season. The home team had a bit of a rough start out of the gate as the center snaps the ball over the Garfield quarterback's head, giving the Fighting Irish the first two points of the game. That's a safety. On the ensuing possession, Mark Tafia takes the handoff, breaks a couple of tackles, and rumbles into the end zone for six. Watch out for Tafia, he'll come back later. On O'Day's next drive, quarterback Imani Scott finds Dane Harmon for a first down and this big hit. Who knew the biggest hit of the first half would come from an offensive play? That same drive, Scott gives to Cameron Daniels, who takes it up the gut for the easy score. Fighting Irish in control, it wouldn't get any better for the hometown Bulldogs. After new quarterback Jack Anderson spelled Scott for the Fighting Irish, he pitches to the Fiat again, who makes two quick cuts for another O'Day touchdown. The Fighting Irish would go on to win this one, 37 points. Thank you, Alec. It's been a challenging season for the Redmond Mustangs. Their fans hoping for something big against Eastlake. Wolves quarterback Grady Robinson throws a quick pass to Nate Sutter. Breaks free at the line. Nice move right here as he picks up bonus yards before a herd of Mustangs finally brings him down. The Wolves capitalize two plays later. Off the fake, Robinson keeps it and finds some room on the outside. He's going in for the touchdown. Eastlake. A little ground and pound. Leroy Jackson takes the handoff, runs into a pile, and then the Wolves just kind of move the pile here. Strength on strength. Jackson working hard for the yards. Next time around, though, not as tough. Robinson rolls left and then throws back to his right, and Jackson takes it from there. Give credit to the Wolves' defense. They pitch a shutout in this game. Sutter and Austin Gray stuff this play right here as Eastlake knocks off Rebin 49 nothing. 
It's time for the King Five Big Game. Well, it was a very, very close vote this week. It seems like it gets that way every week. 11,000 votes separated by just 24 for the winner. And the winner tonight, Peninsula Gig Harbor in the Fish Bowl. We bring in Chris Egan, who was there all night long. Chris, what do you got for us? Paul, first off, here's the thing I love about the Blitz Show. It's so interactive. I'm watching it right now on Facebook, on the King 5 Facebook page. And I'm on there. I, I'm putting comments on there. So, hey, if you're watching on Facebook, leave some comments. I'll talk with you all night long if you want. This is some good stuff. All right, let's get to the fishbowl, as Paul was talking about. This may be, this may be the best rivalry game in the state. I know there's a little debate on this, but this is definitely a top 10 rivalry game. And the 40th annual Fishbowl lived up to the hype. And this game had a lot on the line tonight. Gig Harbor needed to win this game, Paul, to keep their playoff hopes alive. Well, Peninsula needed a win tonight to stay on track and stay in the hunt for a league title. Everyone fired up for the big game and also bundled up. Chilly conditions at Roy Anderson Field tonight. The Seahawks, though, would heat things up in a hurry. On their first play from scrimmage, Burt Griffin finds Braden Potter. He's open in the middle, and holy Harry Potter, he's gone. Potter takes this one 97 yards to the house, and it's 7-0 Peninsula. Gig Harbor senior Tommy Williams all over the field tonight, doing it on defense and offense. Somehow he makes the grab here and then shakes and bakes his way for a gain of 20 yards. Second quarter, the Tides tie things up when Ben Hollenbeck calls his own number, takes it to the outside, and scores the 10-yard touchdown. You think Ben has some moves? How about the Gig Harbor dance team? As I like to say, they were bringing it tonight. <laughs> Paul Sylvie had a big leg back in the day, and Logan Kinney has one now. 47-yarder is good. Tides up 10-7 at the half. Sophomore Ethan Williams is having a season to remember. The lockdown corner with his fourth interception on the year. Fourth quarter we go, and Peninsula is back in business. Sean Skladani fights hard and reaches for the touchdown. He gets it. Seahawks now in front, 14-10. After a gig harbor fumble, Burke Griffin. Gets a few good blocks, and Burke is gone. He has a 40-inch vertical jump and the speed of a cheetah. 93-yard touchdown for Burke. Go ahead and celebrate, Seahawks fans. Peninsula wins it 21-10. to It's a blast. I wouldn't ask for anything else on Fishbowl, and we look forward to it all year. What a night from Burke Griffin, and we will have much more from the Peninsula quarterback plus the head coach, Ross Filkins, coming up a little bit later on in the Blitz. In about 10 to 15 minutes' time, we have some extended sound with them. Gig Harbor, by the way, they still lead the overall Fishbowl series, but Peninsula is getting closer. The Seahawks have now won three straight Fishbowls. Hey, jump on Facebook. Let me know your thoughts. I want to know what's the best rivalry out there. Who's the team to beat? Paul, I'll be chatting on Facebook all night long, and I'll see you in about 15 minutes' time. Back to you, buddy. All right, thank you, Chris. Let's uh, take a chance to enhance your viewing experience there when it comes to high school football. It's the big game replay. For those of you at the big game or fans who can't be there, we're turning around the best plays from the game. And you got some good ones out there tonight, Chris Egan did in the fishbowl. Moments later, you can see him on King 5 Sports Twitter, the Twitter page, so don't forget to follow us on Twitter at King 5 Sports. All right, uh, you know, we, we're going to get to the scores now, right, Tone? Uh, let's, let's bring in Gabby. She's uh, our digital intern, and, you know, we like to let them wear their alumni jerseys. Well, she looks better in a sweatshirt, folks. She brought that. It's custom made just for her. So, Gabby, take us through the scores. All right, so we have the first 12 games from the night here. We have Nacelle beating Lummi Nation 54-6. to Edmonds Woodway over Everett 48 to 0. North Kitsap shutting out Port Angeles in a high scoring game 69 to 0. Kalawaya beating Port Townsend 27 to 6. Up here we have Shorecrest over Linwood 48 to 15. Lake Stevens and Jackson another big shutout 70 to 0. Nia Bay over Darrington 32 to 20. Vashon Island over Ch Chimacum 22 to 13. We have a low-scoring game with Bellevue over Juanita, 8-0. to 
Adna beats on Alaska 27 to 8. Kent Lake over Thomas Jefferson in a 31 to 0 shutout. And we have Stellicum over Clover Park 51 to 7. So those are the first 12 we had for you. <laughs> Right behind me. <laughs> you know, you know when Alec does the scores, I'm always messing with him. So I figured I would just come over here and uh, you know stand by next to you. But good job on the scores. All right. Thank you. So Olympia, huh? Yes. Yeah. It was class of 2015, and and, and now you're over at UW. Yes. I'm okay. Loving it at UW. All right. So special digital intern appearance here from Alec or from Alex coming on. This is Gabby. Alex coming on with his Woodenville jersey, so nice sweatshirt, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, very nice. Ladies golf. Ladies golf. We'll get that golf on this sport. show once for sure. <laughs> Just for you. All right, due to crossover, we had a lot of things going on on the high school schedule. We had a crossover and playoff games that uh, have not yet been scheduled, so uh, they're kind of holding off on the next big game voting. So that's kind of the, why we don't have the voting up just yet. So uh, we'll get it going Sunday or Monday, and then the voting will commence, and we'll get after it. So now let's get to the cheerleaders. <laughs> Energy. Tumwater and Black Hills having a go tonight. It's a big game for both teams and it is close most of the way. T-Birds quarterback Cody Whalen doing a lot of work on this one. He drops back to pass, but the pressure shuts that down in a hurry. So Whalen has to tuck it away and take off. Good piece of running. Tough to get down, but Lucas Johnson and company make it a group effort. They get a field goal out of that drive. Back on the Wolves. Quarterback Jaden Coat airs it out for Nick Bovenkamp. He's tough to cover at 6 too. That's a touchdown. Tumwater looking to counter. Whalen heaves this ball deep, but overthrows everybody except Taylor Simmons. He cradles the interception and turns it back upfield for a nice return. The Wolves defense doing its job tonight while the offense takes care of business. Another impressive throw by quarterback Jaden Coat fires to Ethan Loveless. Nice catch for a touchdown, and Black Hills wins a good one, 22-17. Liberty on the road to face Mercer Island, and Islander they're having a little trouble breaking through the sign there. We picked this up in the third quarter. The Patriots up 21-0. Ryan Kirshner gets the carry and fumbles. Islanders recover, but they have to punt. Liberty gets the ball again. Jacob Thorson gets the carry. And ladies and gentlemen, he's rumbling and bumbling. Oh, there it is again, folks, early in the show. Carrying the pile, keeping the legs going, young man. He's down to the one. Ball comes out, but they rule him down. Patriots will try three straight runs. Jason McNair gets the carry here, but no luck. And finally, on fourth down, Sam Brown. Going to call his own number here, and Sam gets in. Liberty wins this one, 28-0. Little jam session, the eighth percussion session section as the beat, Lincoln Bowl. As we get to the highlights, Lancers pounding the drums. Cameron Gawkey with the one-yard plunge. Lakes extends its lead to 28-17. Last week's play of the week winners, Caden Filer to Mikhail Gamble. Campbell, they really working for those extra yards. Lincoln on the move. It's a fumble here. Jadon McMillan scoops it up and makes a strong return to the middle of the field. Lancers crank it up on offense as well to go with some of that good defense. Gawk as a knack for running up a middle 20-yard touchdown run. Once more through the air. They're going to get it done. Liam Blatto lays it in perfectly to Deshaun Wayne. Lakes wins it 42-24, 6-0 now in PCL play. Now, let's turn it over to Tony Black. Senior night for the Blanchett Braves. They had a full house ready to root them on against Eastside Catholic. First quarter with the Braves down 7-0. Alex Johnson finds Galen, and he makes a man miss before darting downfield for 40-plus yards. The Braves, though, would have to settle for just three points. Next possession for the Crusaders. Sam Adams, smooth like a glass of summer ale, cuts through that traffic, and he's going to take it in for six points. Eastside Catholic goes up 14-3. Crusaders stifling on defense. John Temapel says, uh-uh. 
not today. Drags him down for a big loss. Now after the Braves get a stop, whoops, I don't think that's how that's supposed to work. The Braves will take over with excellent field position but could get no points out of it. The Braves threatening again in the second. This was a theme for them, a fumble. Crusaders would take over and you know what's about to happen. Michael Franklin takes a snap and he launches a bomb down to go DJ. That's my DJ Rogers who finds the end zone. Crusaders would go up big. Look, this one did not end well for the Braves, but let's forget about that and give a shout out to the students. During halftime, the cheerleaders picked one of their friends to join them on field for a supersonic dance performance. So it wasn't all bad, but the Crusaders get the 44-17 win. It's time for our player of the week. All right, back in the studio. Gabby took us through the scores first. Alex is going to take us scores a little bit later, but right now Alec has the player of the week. And we actually have two players of the week oh, this cool. week. It's a bit of a special case. Uh, really good performance from two guys from the same team. Uh, both from Monroe High School, wideout Efton Chisholm and quarterback Gio Fergozo. Uh, the Bearcats quarterback Fergozo tore apart the Knights defense and threw for 279 yards and four touchdowns. Three of those went to wide receiver Chisholm, who accounted for 122 receiving yards and added this kickoff return for a touchdown to lead Monroe over Kamiak last Friday. Well, me, me and him, we've just been like really good friends. We met in like fifth grade, and then ever since then, we just, me and him, just been hanging out like every other chance we get. You know, we hang out on and off the field, and uh, you know, he's just my number one target, so I just love throwing it to him. It makes, makes me look super good, so. The old line really kept my boy open. He had plenty of time for me, and I was just doing doing my thing. But they both have a great grasp of our offense and what we expect against certain coverages and stuff. And you know, they're like Russell Wilson and Baldwin. You just close your eyes and throw it, and, and most likely he'll come up with it. We started out kind of rough, 0 and 3. You know, it's never good to start out like that. But um, things are finally starting to click. You know, our defense is starting to get things going. Our offense has been clicking. So yeah, we've been picking it up. So we just look forward to keeping that growing. Good to see you. Congrats to those two. Staying up north, the lovely fireworks display at Everett Memorial. Mariner finishes the drive. Dennis Buryuk to Fernando Contreras. That's a touchdown. Now to dueling defenses. Cascades, Jordan Harris with the pick. How about Contreras? Doing it on both sides of the ball. Mariner gets it done with Lemon Giallo. Up the middle for a touchdown. Back come the Bruins. Here comes the second interception. We're getting ahead of ourselves here on the show. This is called underwriting when it comes to highlights. All right, <laughs> that's Lyman with a touchdown. Now, Devontae Murray, Murphy, McMillan, he's in. Cascade goes on to win. Hey, sorry, fellas, we butchered that one, but we do have the final correct. Cascade wins it 34-21. To our great stadium, the Eagles of Graham Kapowson taking on the Rodgers Rams, celebrating their 50th season of football. Huskies head coach Chris Peterson sees plenty of offense in this one. Tommy Loa is a freight train, 6'4", 255. That's a touchdown. Ensuing kickoff, Joseph Dwyer takes the kick, finds his blockers, and then presto, out of the crowd comes Tyrese Rios' trap. The Rams pull out the reverse and turn it into big yardage. The offense takes advantage. Love this play. The end around, the pass back to the quarterback, Mikhail Gillespie, Throws deep, look at this catch by Josiah Drain. Juggling grab, in for a touchdown. Eagles quarterback Dylan Morris marches the Eagles down the field, caps it off by keeping this one himself, right up the middle for a touchdown. Eagles switch directions, but keep rolling. The handoff to Shabro Johnson, and the Brodometer reads 35 yards on this touchdown run. Graham Kapowson goes to seven and one, winning 38-21. We need more music in this show. Drummer's definitely into it. All right, pull out to the rest of the band. It's Washington and Franklin Pierce tonight. Watch Joshua Camacho turn the corner and get upfield. He's just 5'6", 150. He's got mighty mouse speed. The Macho Man takes it to the house for a touchdown. Next time around, Camacho doesn't have to cover as much ground. He takes the handoff and the whole pile moves over the goal line. The Patriots teaming up for six. Patriots start to pull away. Quarterback, Cole Andrews. Drops to pass, fires to Dennis Yevchev in the end zone. Nice catch for a touchdown, and Washington wins it 31-14. Chief Self hosting Roosevelt tonight. The team excited for this one. Picked this up in the first, Roosevelt quarterback, Zach Joss. Gonna fumble this one, and a handoff, and the Seahawks recover. They go on to score 
from that position. Going up 7-0. Roosevelt on the drive again. Joss looking for redemption. Finds Harrison Fitch for the big game. That leads to a field goal. 7-3 South. Ensuing drive. It's Seahawks quarterback Zach Cunningham rolls out. Finds Jeloni McMillan wide open. 14-3 South. Rough Riders back on the drive. Josh showing off the arm again. This time he finds Joe Cantrell, who's going to stroll into the promised land. Roosevelt cuts the lead to four. It's like a barn burner here, folks. All this action happening in the first quarter. Now, second quarter. Hawks on the drive. This play looks familiar. Cunningham rolls out to find McMillan wide open again. 20 to 10 at that point. Stays close the whole way. Chief Self wins a great game, 42-37. All right, time for some scores. Bear with me on this one. Let's get to it. Friday Harbor, a winner. Seaholm over Bellingham, 54-27. River Ridge over Ording, 48-0 the final. Arlington over Marysville, Pilchuck, 17-10. Auburn Mountain View over Hazen, 8-7. That's gotta be a typo. North Mason beats Kingston, 36-20 the final. Elma over Forks, 35-10. Archbishop Murphy over Cedro Woolley, 42-21. Cubs still looking for a jersey. Sumner beat Bellum in 37-10. Burlington Edison beats Lakewood, 39-33. South Whidbey over Granite Falls, 19-14. Hoquiam beats Swim, 42-35. Kings over Sultan, 52-13. Mount Si over Newport, 49-14. Lindbergh over Henry Foss, 26-14. Marysville Getcho beat Shorewood 28-27. A good one. Mount Lake Terrace over Cedar Crest 12-7. Wilson beat Spanaway Lake 44-12. Lots of scores. Bainbridge over West Seattle 40-23. Rochester over Aberdeen Wishka Valley 28-21. Blaine beats Anacortes 34-8. Cascade Christian over Wright 49-8. Olympia beats South Kitsap 45-20. I promise, folks, it's coming to an end. Nathan Hale over Evergreen 49-13. Mount Vernon. Giving the last score here over Kamiak, 57-7. So a nice one from Mount Vernon tonight. Now for a little journey with the Fife Pie Band. for the five Trojans. Senior night and homecoming as the Trojans take on the White River Hornets. Both teams hoping to make a few more memories tonight. Hornets quarterback T.J. Strohschein does a nice job escaping the rush here, breaks free, and turns this into a big game before the Trojans trip him up downfield. T.J. gets rid of the ball a little quicker next time around. The toss to Hunter Smith. He races down the sideline. The Trojans defense stiffens and holds White River to a field goal. Ensuing kickoff. Dom Hernandez fields the ball and does a nice job finding his way before he hits the gas. Look at a quick move. He makes a little shakes and fender and gains another chunk of yards. Offense takes advantage of the field position. Quarterback Gannon Guinness keeps it. Looking for a little opening. See you later. Guinness takes it all the way to the end zone. Second quarter. Hornets defense stiffens again. Guinness looking to throw, but he has no chance. Caden Rohr all over him for the sack. Fife wins on homecoming and senior night, 35-17. Bob Keeney Stadium, where the Boffa Cougars get out of the gates quickly against the Vikings of Inglemore. Cougs fans amped up as usual, and they should be. Their quarterback, Eric Boehner, finds Leon Johnson in the end zone for a touchdown. The Cougars, a whole lot of offense in this one. Next time down, Boehner buys himself some time, rolling to his right, and that's enough to spot Riley Morrison in the back of the end zone for another touchdown. Vikings quarterback Colby Solomon wishes he could buy some time. He has no shot on this one. Gage Potter wrestles him down for the sack. More defense, and this is a tough guy play from both players. Ryan Metz delivers a big hit, and Kenyon Woodley takes it like a champ. 
Oh, man. That's a tough man competition. Well done, fellas. Cougars get that offense cranked up again. Boehner hits Morrison on the run, and he just keeps on running. Nice play by DeSavian Rigney. Makes a touchdown saving tackle. Bottle tries to capitalize, but on third down, it is a bull rush. The captain, Luke Millman and Michael Keating get the sack, force a field goal. Bottle wins it 38-14. All right, we got plenty to go to. We're gonna get back to uh, the big game. More games to get to, lots of highlights. I wanna bring Chris Egan back in. He was out at the Fish Bowl tonight. Peninsula, Gig Harbor. We only heard a, heard a little bit of post game before. The second dose, is always plenty of post. And look, he's still got the phone going, communicating while we're up here screaming about games and scores. Go ahead. Pat, Paul, I'm loving the show tonight. We're getting a lot of great questions, a lot of people jumping on here, uh, a lot of shout outs, so it's pretty good stuff. But let's get to the uh, fishbowl. All is quiet for now, but this place, I got to tell you what, it was rocking tonight. It was packed on both sides. Peninsula, Gig Harbor, the crowds were going wild tonight. Gig Harbor actually had the lead at halftime 10 to 7. They nailed a 47 yard field goal to take the lead. Peninsula went into the half, they were down. Their defense came out in the second half. They shut out Gig Harbor. Offense came through with two touchdowns, and Peninsula gets the big win tonight, 21 to 10, over their rivals. For us, you know, Friday is all about finishing, and so when we got to the fourth quarter and we went here, that's just our time. You know, that's just what we do in the fourth quarter, and so um, we're built for this, and we were excited to play that fourth. You got as a coach. That's got to be exciting to know you have a group of high school kids that have that mentality. Tell me about that. Well, it is exciting because we've earned it. You know, that's 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 in, in yoga. That's in you know early morning weights. You know, that's that's a lot of work all year long. You know, so that when that goes up, it's truly confident from your head to your toes. And so that's our Seahawks spirit. And we play with it in the fourth. With that in mind, your quarterback starts off. They get a 97-yard play, and then things just. They can't get yeah. things clicking, and they, they just keep it going, and then he ends it with a 92-yard run like that. Well, and that exactly. There were so many things in between those two dynamic plays that we wanted to take advantage of, and it just we just weren't quite clicking on all cylinders. We had a, a turnover, a couple penalties that's not, they're just not, not like us, um, but we were able to survive all those and then finish. Tell me about your defense tonight. They've got some guys over there that can run the ball and run it hard. Your defense stepped up. Well, look, first of all, Gig Harbor's a very, very good football team. Well coached, a lot of great kids, great athletes, fast and big up front. So um, they played really well, and, and we had our work cut out for us. But our defense really showed up at the critical times. Honestly, you know, it's nothing more euphoric than just having everyone here watching you and just hearing the crowd so loud and it's so packed out here, especially to get a win like that. It feels amazing. We don't get worried. We take it play by play, and uh, we just we focus on, on our job every play, and that's all, that's all I can ask for my guys. Two plays, about 180 yards. One you throw, one you run. Take me through both of those. Uh, that's uh, all credit to my guys. Braden Potter made a, got a great release, and I just had to flip it out there to him, and he did the rest. And the other one is, I don't know if I was touched. Uh, my guys did a great job blocking, and uh, I just ran as fast as I could. It's not really so much about the scoreboard, but it's more about how we play and how our team works together. So I'm definitely glad that we all came together and we played good tonight. The Peninsula Seahawks uh, pretty much locked up a playoff spot tonight. They are now 6-2 and two overall, 5-1 and one in league play. They will face off against the Cougars from Capitol next week, Gig Harbor. Uh, they're going to look to rebound against a very good Central Kitsap team that is now 6-2. and two. Great night at the Fishbowl. Paul Silva, I got to say, it was alumni night tonight for the Puyallup Vikings, so I have to throw out a shout-out to my Vikes, class of 1991. Uh, sorry I couldn't be there with all the alumni, but, you know, we go where the voters send us, so we're here at the Fishbowl. We had a great time. And I also want to send a big shout-out. Milt, come on out. Milt Hightower, uh, he's the guy behind the scenes, Paul, making it happen. I get a little uh, angry once in a while, and, and Milt calms me through. And our photographer extraordinaire, uh, he's going to end it tonight. Paul because it's a big day for him tomorrow with his Washington State Cougars. There, you go. there he is, Tate Miller. <laughs> Tate, you said to send it back to Paul. Paul, let's go back there to you. you go. go Cougs? You go, can, oh, go oh, Cougs. Yeah. We can sing the fight there song you if you want. You're gonna sing the fight song? We could. Why don't you go over there and sing it and let's send it back to Paul? <laughs>
<laughs> Let's go right there. there you go. <laughs> really are. Hardest working guys in show business, Paul. I see that. Looks good. That's it. Nice to give him some props. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Milt. Thank you, Tate. All right. Uh, we've, uh, you know, we get the morning rally going. We always get the, I always like to commend the staff and the kids for getting up so early and getting after it. Uh, Jordan Wilkerson was out at the, the Rockus Skyline student body this morning for the morning pep rally. You say Spartan Skyline. Skyline. All right, good morning, everybody. guys look like college players. The Skyline Spartans, like they must be eating and lifting out there. Now to some pictures. We want to see what's going on at your games all the time. So it's always, you know, great picks in there. We always find Chris Egan somewhere in there. We saw a lot of them tonight out at the fishbowl in the big game and some great highlights in that one. A couple of 90 plus yard offensive plays. You can send us your pictures via Twitter or Instagram, hashtag K5Blitz. Our friends from the Tacoma School District bringing us out to Mount Tahoma and Stadium. Stadium quarterback Corey Sanders finds Xavier Mason and finds his way through the whole Tahoma defense for the touchdown. Great effort. Next drive, Tahoma gets things going with a long run. It's eventually dragged down here, but not before getting inside the 10 as Mount Tahoma gets it going. They go to Jalen Farmer on the goal line, and Farmer gets things finished off on the drive. He powers ahead to even a score at 7-7. However, Stadium responds with a pitch and run. Nas Briscoe. Briscoe makes a few guys miss on his way to the end zone, but he's not done. Look at the quickness on that kid. Later, Briscoe goes on a little wheel route, catches the pass from Sanders, reaches for the pylon, and scores again. Stadium. Goes on to win this one, 47-14. Out the South Sound Stadium in the Lacey, Timberline, and North Thurston. The Rams fired up for this one, but the Blazers set the tone defensively. Jesse Johnson fills the gap, drops the ball carrier in the backfield. That's a TFL. Tackle for loss. Then Timberline gets lucky. The pass bounces off the receiver's foot. Look at this. Oh, right to Nifi Bomodo. Picks up a convoy and takes it 87 yards for a touchdown. We're going to see that one again, I'm sure. Blazers up 7-0. North Thurston finds some offense. Dylan Harn throws a perfectly placed pass down the sideline. Armani Tanua. Tanua hauls it in for a big gain. The Rams, their own worst enemy on turnovers. This fumble recovered by who else? Bomodo again. Leads to another touchdown. Timberline just has it all working tonight. Beat North Thurston 35-0. All right, time to get to some scores. Alec, the intern, is here. Kind of losing my voice a little bit, buddy. So tonight, the heat is really on you. Go for it. All right, start up here in the quarter. Lake Washington with the big win over Interlake, 45-0, pitched a shutout. Bethel gets a 42-8 win over Bonnie Lake. Yelm, another big win, 49-6 over Shelton. Linden Christian, another shutout, 41-0. Up here, Ferndale. Big win, 56 to 26 over Stanwood. LaSalle gets the big win. Woodenville, the Falcons are flying. Need I remind well, you? Well, let's Need I remind you? Jersey. Need yeah. I remind you? Uh, they get a 42 to 12 win. They got a game against Mount Si again next week for the redemption. Whoa, whoa! Uh, this is turning into a sports cast. Are you telling us what's coming up? <laughs> I was just saying. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm following along. Okay, so we'll be there. On Mount Si next week. Next week on Thursday. Very cool, my man. All right. Carry on. All right, Olympic, uh, the one-score game, 34-27 to over Bremerton. Up here, another close one, 13-9 to Meridian over Mount Baker. Cedar Park Christian gets the 42-0 to win over Coopville. 
Linden, a win 38 to 16. And finally, Toledo, a winner over Winlock, 62 to 8. 62 to 8. Well done, my man. Yeah. You know, each week it gets a little bit, you know, you get a little, a little bit more easier. confident. That's pretty good. All right, so Kale Millen, Mount Si, Woodenville Falcons next week. We're looking forward to it. I have a feeling that might be a candidate for game of the week. Can we get a shot of uh, Milwaukee Brewer fan Winston Dutchin? Last week he's at the big game. This week he's putting together the plays of the week. You know, I should probably get in here so we can hear you. How did you feel about that Brewers game tonight, huh? Love it, baby. Yeah. Game seven. Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> See, I'll be <laughs> I, he doesn't even need a microphone. See, I just I gave him a shot. I know there. How this works. That's right, man. That's awesome. All right. So we're pulling for the Brewers over here in that corner. Dodgers fans may have something else to say about that. But Winston put together the top five plays of the night. So let's get to it. I know we have some good ones in the store. Number five, a couple of big ones at the big game. Peninsula quarterback Burt Griffin on the run pass option decides to run. And why not? The hole opens like Moses part in the Red Sea. Griffin scoots through a 93-yard touchdown run. Incredible as it may seem, that's 93-yard run, and it wasn't even the longest play in this game. We'll see where that one lands on the countdown. All right, number four. We just saw it moments ago. Stadium in Mount Tahoma. Stadium quarterback Corey Sanders hits Xavier Mason over the middle. Mason does the rest. He spins, then jukes his way through the defense for the touchdown. Somehow, Mason makes eight Mount Tahoma defenders miss. I want to watch a little bit of this in uh, – Semi-slow motion. Here he comes. Eight defenders in his path. That's a great effort and well worthy of the number four play of the week. Stadium wins 47-14. Play number three. We go back to King Five. Big game for the Fish Bowl. Peninsula and Gig Harbor. Sheriff Buford T. Justice from Smoking the Bandit would call this an attention getter. On the Seahawks' first play from scrimmage, quarterback Burt Griffin hits Braden Potter. 97-yard touchdown. The best part of this play is the stiff arm from Potter. Get out! That is some strength and a heck of a play. Peninsula wins 21-10. Back to South Sound Stadium for number two. I think we knew we'd see this one again when we saw it earlier in the show. I want to see this in slow motion. The pass bounces off the receiver's foot into the hands of Nifi Vomoto. 87 yards for a touchdown. Incredible, the ball never touches the ground. Here it is again. Off the top of his foot and off he goes. It's not trick photography even though it looks like it. 35-0, the Blazers get the win over North Thurston. Our top play of the week comes from last night's game between Rodgers and Grant Kapowson. Love this play by the Rams. End around, pass back to quarterback Mikhail Gillespie. He throws deep, look at the catch by Josiah Drain. Juggling grab, hangs on for a touchdown. Those guys have gotten a lot of pub off of that highlight. Another look here, defender sticks his arm in there perfectly, but the ball bounces back to Drain and he makes the catch. Great credit there for staying with it for the top play. Oh, we're going to watch it one more time. Give it to him. Three taps for six. Congrats to the Rodgers Rams who get the play of the week. Ryan, you got the thumbs up going? You feeling pretty good? Oh, let's go over here. Let's see. Before we wrap it up. <laughs> Jen told us last time I was here that she didn't want to be on TV. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. All right. So you want to say hi to your sister or anything? Hey, Heather. <laughs> there you go. All right. See? Everybody gets a cameo. Mark Rice back there, but he's been busy all night, so we'll give him a break. All right, that's going to do it for us. Eight weeks down, uh, four shows to go before the big semifinals, and we got a lot going on. Again, the big game voting won't start till Sunday or Monday because there's a lot of crossover games going. We'll see who's going to play next week. But thanks to Alec, the intern, we do know the Woodenville Falcons are playing Mount Si in a major tilt. Man. Cal Millen out there, quarterback in the Wildcats and looking good. Until then, you can join us for the bye week edition of the fifth quarter. That's coming up Sunday after Sunday Night Football. Special guest host because, you know, the Hall of Famer Walter Jones has the week off. So he's visiting, he's vacationing. We bring in the professor, John Clayton, and he's got a whole lot of football to talk about and a whole lot of Seahawks. You can join us fifth quarter again after Sunday Night Football. We'll leave you with some Instagram action. We'll see you next week.